Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. This is going to be a teardown slash disassembly video of the Fox Knives Radius and I was thinking since I'm going to be taking this thing apart, might as well just kind of do a, I guess, maintenance video of the Fox Knives Radius as well. I don't know because my maintenance methods or steps that I take to maintain my knives may be a little bit different from everyone else, you know? So anyway, yep, this is it. Uh, I've been using this knife for a couple of days but you could see a bit of gunk in there now and I want to clean that up and I also want to take the opportunity to explore the mechanism that is behind this. I think it's a really cool mechanism. I love the implementation and I suspect that it is a button lock but yeah I just want to see how come this thing is the way it is like it's got no blade play and stuff like that so that's really quite interesting. Now uh, some tools that I have which is quite simple I've got a T6 torque screw driver and I've got a T8 size torque screwdriver as well. I know there are some knife reviewers on YouTube that don't like the use of T6 screws but well hey you got four T6 screws on this thing just wanted you guys to know. And then um, I I haven't decided which knife lube I wanted to use because this mechanism isn't your typical flipper or you know like thumb slot opening kind of knife so yeah it's not a frame lock it is this new mechanism here so I don't know if I want to go for KPL which is really thin or like uh, should I go for 85 weight nano oil and my suspicion is that I'll be going for the nano oil but that really depends and I also got a couple of microfiber cloths here as well just so I could wipe up some extra lubrication or whatever's in there. Okay, that was really simple. There was no Loctite at all. Like the screws are all like in pristine condition. So yeah, I'm quite surprised. I was expecting to face some resistance in the form of Loctite, but maybe it's because this is the exclusive version using the fat carbon scales. I don't know, but that's a really pleasant surprise. Now it's time to, I guess, kind of lift this and split this apart. You can see some lubrication in there. Let's just carry on with this. There we go. So my suspicions were right. There are liners in there. These are really, really well done. Like the slot for the liners is just perfect. Wow. Just wanted to point it out. Like these are the slots that I mentioned about in my first impressions video. I said that there are some slots so you can see on this side as well. Yeah, I don't know what these slots are for. Yeah, but anyway, check it out. This is the button here. Yeah, I don't even know how they got the button on. Hmm. Is it screw? It could be a screw. So let me get the spring out. This whole thing is full of gunk. Just a lot of lubrication here. So just gonna wipe it down a little bit. Okay, now let's see. How do we remove this button? How did it even slip on in the first place? Yep. I guess this much. You unscrew it apart. So there we go. so cool so here we go this is the button and it looks like there was no loctite as well uh, I think I want to put some when I'm reassembling it because if this comes off when the knife is all closed up it's gonna be a little bit troublesome really is quite cool and let's look at the rest of it so uh, see it's running on ball bearings yeah I think I will be using nano oil so let me just lift this out of the pivot if it wants to come up ah pretty snug fit there we go wow a lot of lubrication all over gonna lose those washers or ball bearings yep gotta remember the orientation so just gonna give the blade a quick wipe down i gotta say that the slot here this channel is really really sharp probably would scrape some skin off so uh, those of you disassembling this knife take note of that be careful you could see some lube in there as well that's where the button lock would go in and the spring Wow, that's quite dirty. All right, I think I've gotten the blade relatively clean. Let me just set this aside, clean the bearings a little bit. Now let's look at the back spacer. Now you can see very clearly Radius Italy M390. And that's the screws for the clip. I'll lift this off like that. Wipe the back spacer a little bit. Even the back spacer is really well made and finished off very nicely. All of this is actually rounded a little bit and there's a bit of chamfering going on as well. That's really well done. And then you have a couple of standoffs here that would probably just wiggle off. Yep, that's right because they all were held in place by those T6 torque screws. So a couple of those. We got a stop pin here that 
doesn't seem to want to move and then we have the pivot pin which has a little notch cut out right at the back yep that's a very special looking pivot pin let me see if i can pop that out very weird okay well let's just uh take out the pocket clip looks to be t6 torque screws as well yep i was right also not loctited down so this one i'm going to loctite down for sure because i don't want that to be moving at all right so there pocket clip comes right off that's the pocket clip for you so the scale itself has a slot or spot there for the pocket clip yep a dedicated spot so non-reversible pocket clip and i'm gonna try to take off this liner there we go it's moving oh okay so that pivot pin was not glued in interesting pivot pin look at that it looks like a two-piece construction let's see if i can wiggle it out yep got it out now i've got the liner out as well i'm gonna wipe this guy down a little bit too and then the other side of the scale a lot less lubrication overflowing onto the scale itself as compared to the show side which is quite surprising because initially i thought there was going to be some kind of mechanism in here but yeah it looks to be rather simple it looks like some kind of a modified button lock which is quite cool because usually button locks is when that button itself doesn't travel in a channel it stays in one spot but this one is actually a moving button i guess now let's look at this pivot pin it looks very interesting i don't know why it's got that notch there there has to be a reason uh i can't really tell what that reason is for apart from pinching it to tighten this i guess was this even a two-piece construction yeah it really looks like a two-piece construction okay as i look down the slot and i know that it's not showing up on camera because no light is really getting in but this is loctite down so this part this piece here this pill shaped piece is screwed in and loctite in to the pivot pin i guess i'm gonna call this a pivot pin because it really isn't a screw so it's supposed to sit into that slot right there so that is it basically this is the disassembly of the fox knives radius i'm not going to take out the stop pin because that's rather straightforward so i'll just leave it there it is a little bit dirty here now but i'm going to reassemble it and i've decided that i'll be using nano oil instead of kpl no disrespect to kpl i love it it is actually my go-to lubricant for knife maintenance but for this with all these moving parts and things sliding around i'll be using nano oil and i also will be using some blue loctite especially for the buttons and for the pocket clip apart from that i think that the knife held up pretty well without loctite for any of those screws including the pivot screw so i don't think i'll be using any loctite on those hopefully you guys can understand the mechanism let's see if i can make this work yeah so this is the interface itself so this is basically the main locking mechanism where there is a spring underneath that goes into this slot so it'll be kind of like this okay so with the spring here it'll be applying pressure this way so that's when the button pops up so when you depress the button is when this will move like that up and then it allows for travel along the channel and then when it finally reaches the bottom part that's where it drops in with the pressure from the spring and then you will basically lock the blade close so it's gonna be like that yeah so it's a pretty simple application i like it Alright, I've got the whole knife back together now and yeah, it's a little bit oily because I just handled all the knife lube but yep, that's good. The difference in um, that oil that I use is quite obvious in terms of experience. You know, I can't really describe it because the original lubrication that they used was very smooth and so is this. I mean, clearly, 
right? I'm not having any problems. And I want to say that it's a lot easier than I expected, but putting it back was a little bit more tricky, especially when you're trying to line up the button with the slot in the blade and then closing everything up as well. So you got to take note of that. Make sure you also get some lubrication on all the areas that you think any part or any moving part will be touching because that's really important for the functionality of this knife. Because yeah, I mean, the button will be touching the top part of this track it'll be rubbing on the inside of the track as well and of course you know it's going to be touching a bit of the blade in that slot over there as well so a lot of things for you to take note of but i think i got it done quite well i think centering is also pretty good um i can't really say that i messed the centering up because it looks like how it was initially and that is it i hope that you enjoyed this video so far i hope that you found it interesting and informative i found the execution of this lock very interesting uh, based on what would originally be a button lock in my opinion you know no disrespect to fox knives or anyone else but yeah i found it really really interesting i like this execution it's very cool and yeah i mean it makes it very easy to actuate see and the thing is, it's not going to be a gravity knife because no matter what, there's no way for you to open up the knife unless you depress this. So that's that's really cool. Very much like a button lock, I must say. So that itself, this button here, is really crucial for the whole, uh, I guess, the whole execution of the knife because this is also the locking mechanism itself. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout and sharing in this slice of my life. And if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out here and you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, make sure that you hit the bell and turn on the notifications to notify all. Uh, even for you guys who have been longtime subscribers of mine, please make sure that you have the notification set to notify all. Just because YouTube always does funny stuff every once in a while and I don't know why. It never really benefits content creators, but yeah, they do it anyway. Also, I run a Patreon page. I'll put a link up here to that in case you want to go check it out. And if you do become a patron of mine, thank you so much in advance. Once again, everyone, this is the Fox Knives FX550 Radius. And this is the Tools for Gents exclusive version featuring the Lava Marble Carbon Fiber by Fat Carbon. Well, that is a mouthful. Such a long description. But yeah, thanks again, everyone. I'll catch all of you in the next slice of my life. Until then, Gaga Boost.